All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome into our second edition of the Fantasy Football Freak Show on CUTV Sports 1. I'm Trevin Catellis. With me today, Johnny Sakaguchi, Peyton Trollinger, and Doug Glatke joining me today. Gentlemen, how's it going? We're in, going into week six here. I feel like it's going good. so fast. I know. And as you can see, we have brought back the helmets. <laughs> and behind me once again, as you remember from last season of Fantasy Football Freak Show, I have the helmets for Pickums as well. All the teams behind me are not involved in today's Pickums. So, as you can see, if you're a Seahawks fan, not in the Pickums. Um, yeah, that's the way it goes. But, uh, yeah, so let's move ahead um, and give a little recap on some of Week Five's action. Of course, if you uh, follow me, you saw I was at the Browns game this past weekend in Cleveland. Um, very fun experience for everyone that was there. My girlfriend and I, my fiance and I was up there. I'm sorry. I have to get used to saying that, by the way. Um, but, you know, but we're, we're up at the game. It was a very fun time. Got to see the Browns beat the Colts. Um, so we're looking forward to it. But the uh, Browns are off to a 4-1 start. The Steelers are undefeated yet. And uh, Chase Claypool had himself a day. Put that out there. Um, so let's with that, we're kind of rolling into We have a lot to talk about. Uh, let's get to the players. And let's get started with that. So, Doug, um, you start us off. Give me your start player, sit player, and sleeper. Go ahead. All right. So, my start player this week is going to be Robbie Anderson. He's been absolutely unreal lately. And, you know, back-to-back, he's had basically 100-yard games every single game this year except for one. And his receptions are up, like he's getting eight or nine receptions a game, and that's big. Um, My sit player for this week, though, is going to be the starting running back of whoever signs Le'Veon Bell, because it's down to the Bills, the Chiefs, and the um, Dolphins, believe it or not. He's going to go back down to Miami, and he's going to no doubt be caught doing something wild, because... He's a Florida man at heart, you know, and he's going to go down there, probably do Florida man stuff, play some slot receiver, and, yeah, it's going to be great. But, uh, yeah, that's my sit. And then my sleeper is uh, my son, Chase Claypool. It's finally happened. It's happening. Ben, ben has found a way to uh, – Bring the random rookie wide receiver that is drafted in like the second or third round each year. And now, uh, you know, the Super Bowl is in the back of my mind. Hopefully. If you're a Steeler fan. Obviously, I am not. But, you know. I'm actually wearing a brown jersey. I know you are. I can see it. It's a beautiful. Johnny Manziel. Johnny Manziel, baby. Yes. Let's jump over. Uh, Johnny. Go ahead, your start, sit, and sleeper. All right, my start player, or we're going to go down to Jacksonville. Oh, with James Robinson. He's actually been in, very helpful in the fantasy leagues if you don't have him. You can probably find him on the waiver wire right now. Oh, he's only owned in about 20% of leagues, right? He's put up at minimum um, about 50 yards a game with at least one touchdown. Um, so he's definitely been an impact player. There he gets you about anywhere from 15 and 20 points a game. So oh, definitely a, a big help. Uh, my sit player, Eric, as, as Doug already kind of touched on this with when he said uh, anybody that's Heinz Le'Veon Bell owned, I'm going to go with the Buffalo Bills running back Zach Moss. Once again, questionable. He's only – he's good when he's healthy, but right now he's been, either he's missed a game or two who are just can't seem to finish a game, game right now. And then my sleeper, or we're going back to Jacksonville, oh, with uh, the Oscar Chanel Jr., or the wide receiver out there. Again, another wide receiver on the waiver wire you can end up grabbing. And, again, he's only owned in about 15% of the leagues. He's put up 15 points the last two weeks, so he's definitely one of those sleeper guys that – uh, a lot of people missed in the draft, or if he did get taken in the draft, he was one of those late picks. So I th- think he definitely could be a, a good player for you, especially this week. They're playing Detroit. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
I like that. Indeed, let's jump down to Peyton and give me your start, sit, and sleeper. So for my uh, my starter, I'm going to have to start Calvin Ridley of the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons are bad, but that doesn't necessarily mean Ridley's bad. Uh, I got his stuff right here. He averages about 21.6 fantasy points. Uh, last week, week five, he got uh, 136 yards on eight receptions, and he got 23 points. I think that's pretty solid. I don't. I don't see why you would not start him. <laughs> I don't see a bad reason to. Uh, my sit player is Cam. I believe it's Acres or Atkers. Um, you know he only averages about three three points. Uh, on last week on nine attempts, he only got sixty one yards for six points. That's very like underwhelming. I don't think that you should put that on your fantasy team, especially if you're trying to win some money. And my sleeper, I'm going to go to the Vikings, Alexander Madison. Uh, he's averaging 6.6 .6 a game. Uh, don't let that fool you, though, um, because recently Dalvin Cook just got injured, so he's going to have to step up into a role. So I think he, he's expected to have a good week. Okay. Let's jump over to myself as well. I'll give you my start, sit, and sleeper. Uh, start player this week going to be Adam Thielen. Of course, if you're a Minnesota Vikings fan, you love that he's taken off this year so far. Uh, Kirk Cousins is finding him in every way he can, getting him open and finding receptions for him, whether it's yardage or touchdowns. He's making it happen every week with over 20 points weekly. Your sit player this week, Melvin Gordon. Do I have to say anything else? <laughs> DUI. He's not playing. Sit him. Why would you even why would you chance it? Um, I know his list is questionable. I don't care. He's not going to play. Just the way it is. Don't, don't play him. Um, sleeper player, uh, Chase Edmonds of the Arizona Cardinals. He's blowing up. Keep him. Draft him. Jerry Judy's another one. Big player from Denver as a receiver. And Jerick McKinnon. He's available in a lot of leagues, too. So, but he's, and he's uh, blowing up also. So, yeah. Let's jump back to gallery view. Let's talk about the standings here. We'll toss it around a little bit. We have, we have some time here. So, let's toss it around. Um, let's start off with the NFC West. Uh, Seattle leading us at the top, followed by LA Rams, the Arizona Cardinals, and the San Francisco 49ers, who made it to the Super Bowl last season, right now at the bottom of this of the division. Um, who wants to take their thoughts on the NFC West so far? I, I got it. All right, Peyton, go ahead. So it's kind of surprising that the 49ers are at the bottom, but then again, you got to think they've lost a lot of players. Um, you know, the big key is I think they they still have Nick Bosa out which is a huge loss for their, for their defense. They're only two and three. They're not terrible. They're not completely out of it, but they really need to start making some changes. You know, Garoppolo needs to start doing better. I, th I, I think I heard that he got benched at halftime. So I think he just needs to get back to where he was last year and he needs to get it. On the other hand, the Seattle Seahawks, they're five and O, oh, which is like their best start in a very long time. I've always – had a slight liking for the Seahawks. So I think if they keep it up, we're looking at a serious Super Bowl contender right here. Okay. Let's jump over to the next one, and that would be – whoops, no, wrong button. There we go. All right, jumping over to the next one and look at the NFC East. This one is a uh, – this one's a division, let me tell you. None of the teams are doing too great in this division. Dallas leading it off the top. Of course, they just lost Dak Prescott. Philadelphia below them with that 1-3-1. One, and one. Washington below them. And then the New York Giants closing it out at the bottom. Who wants to take this one? I guess I'll take it. Um, this is a horrible division. Uh, especially now that Dak got hurt. Like, really, the only redeeming quality in that entire division was Dak Prescott. Is he Gale yet? Well, yeah. But, like, what I was saying was, like, Dallas. Oh. You know, the only team in that that's remotely decent is Dallas. And now, without Dak, like, I get they still have Andy Dalton. I get that he still uh, can go out there and, you know, do the thing a little bit. But I don't think that he's a, a difference maker, you know. Like, the difference between him and Dak is absolutely astounding, you know. We were getting to a point this year where Dak was doing so well that he was getting on that uh, same level as Russell Wilson, where he, you know, at any, any given moment could become a top three quarterback in the league. And 
it's just unfortunate what happened to him. And, you know, this is one of those divisions where if you're a fan of an NFC team, you pray to God they get the top seed because they'll get that, uh, they'll get an, they'll pull an NFC, an NFC West team or an, it's NFC East, right? Yeah. Yeah. They'll pull an NFC East team and just absolutely destroy them in the playoffs. Okay. Moving on to the next one. We're looking at the NFC South. New Orleans topping out at the top of that division. Tampa Bay in second. Carolina third. And, of course, Atlanta at the bottom. Uh, just firing their head coach. Who wants to take the South of the NFC? I'll take the South. Go ahead. Once again, and the NFC South being one of the most dominant divisions in that entire conference. And uh, I'm not surprised to see Drew Brees and the Saints sitting there at the top right now, uh, even without Michael Thomas. However, I have seen Brees struggling, though, without having his number one receiver, or even though he still has Emmanuel Sanders and Alvin Kamara there in the backfield. Uh, Tampa Bay, again, not surprised to see them in the position they're in, in with Tom Brady and his uh, wide receiver or core that he has. And that pack of running backs and having Gronk and two other tight ends that are to help out uh, Carolina as well. Oh, they're finding ways to win. And even without having uh, Christian McCaffrey, he, who is their go-to running back, but the guys behind him were stepping up and showing out that they or why they deserve to be winning football games right now. And then we have the lonely Atlanta Falcons. Uh, the, most of their games, I feel like I'm watching in that Super Bowl game over again, and because they'll have a lead going into the fourth quarter and they, and just choke it away. And, and they did the right move, firing their head coach this week. Uh, hopefully, they can and find a way to start winning a couple games. But the way things are looking for them, I don't think they are going to do too well. The going down the stretch, I mean, you're zero and five already. He, that's a steep hill to climb. You pretty much have to win out the rest of the season if you want to even think about having a playoff uh, shot. And with the way that, that division's set up right now, I I don't give them a chance in that. Uh, honestly, I think what's going to be best for Atlanta is they're going to need to start tearing down, start trading off some asset, uh, and get ready to start rebuilding for the future now. Okay. And then moving on to the last NFC division in the NFC North, Green Bay, Chicago, Detroit, and Minnesota. Green Bay, in that order. Green Bay at the top, Chicago second. Minnesota at the bottom, below Detroit in third. Who has to finish out the NFC North? I could take it, I guess. <laughs> Not really my thing, but I can, I can do it. Not really my thing, but I can do it. Um, you know, so Green Bay, of course – you know, led by Aaron Rodgers, they're going to be there. Chicago, I, I'm surprised to see what, how well they're doing this season with Nick Foles leading them behind. Um, never know how he's going to do, of course, when he, he got traded. When he led Philadelphia to the Super Bowl, got traded down or, or shined down with Jacksonville. Thought he was going to do well down there. Didn't do too well. Of course, got injured a little bit as well, too. Um, and then now he's in Chicago, making it happen with Jimmy Graham at tight end and all those weapons he has up there with the Bears. Um so he, he's looking good. I think that they could possibly pull away the top seed in that NFC North division this, this year. Um, so we'll see what happens. Let's move ahead to the AFC. And let's start in the AFC West. Kansas City leading us at the top. Las Vegas Raiders in second. Denver in third. And the LA Chargers in fourth. Um, thought the Chargers would be doing better. They're not. But who wants to take the West? I'll take it. Um, you know, about the Chargers, man, they've – they they've been struggling but like the big thing this year and i've said this on like my own podcast and stuff the big thing this year is developing justin herbert you know and he has looked phenomenal in some of the in the small sample size that he's had so far i think that they really got a they got a home run ball in that guy they did really good uh picking him over some of the people they could have taken at that draft slot. And, you know, the rest of the division is uh, 
is interesting because you're going to expect the Broncos to rebound after uh, Drew Locke comes back. I think that he's been a full full go, full participant in practice this week, and he's probably going to play on Sunday. And then, you know, obviously the Chiefs are going to run away with the division because they're the Chiefs, but. I think the Raiders are will grab an AFC wild card spot out of this division because they've been really good. They've been very underrated. You know, it's the typical John Gruden team that just emerges from the shadows and becomes a becomes a monster. Okay. All right, let's move ahead to the next one. Again, hitting the wrong button because Trevor no, TK doesn't have to work computer. Um over to AFC East. We're looking at this one for once. For once. I'm so happy to see that the New England Patriots are not the number one seed in the AFC East division. Sorry for all you Patriots fans. Not a fan. Um, Buffalo rounding out the top, New England in second, Miami third, and the New York Jets at the bottom in fourth. Who wants to take the East? I can take it. All right. So, kind of like you were saying, I'm very happy to see that the Patriots are not at the top because, you know, I'm a Steelers fan. I hate the Patriots. But – You know, we got to treat them equally here, I guess. But, you know, the Bills, I I think I'm really shocked. I'm not actually, no, I'm not really that shocked that they're at the top of the East. You know, the Patriots, I mean, they've always been good. They are still good, but I mean, they're kind of going through a little bit of growing pains without Tom Brady. So they got to get used to Cam Newton and all that good stuff. The Dolphins, I would definitely watch, though, because they are starting to get very hot. Um, they, I believe last week they played the 49ers and absolutely obliterated them. And, uh, with the recent news of Le'Veon Bell being released by the 0-5 Jets or better wise known as the Buck Fumbles, they're 0-5, they release Le'Veon Bell. I really think that Bell's going to go to uh, Miami and he's really going to turn it up there and they're going to get over that 500 mark and potentially even more. I love your uh, <laughs> reference to the butt fumbles. You have to mention the butt fumble every time you talk about the Jets or it's like unholy. <laughs> they, deserve, they deserve the 0-5 pain because of Mark Sanchez. Yes. All right, AFC South. Tennessee rounding at the top even though the whole team has COVID. Uh, Indianapolis <laughs> at second. Houston at third and Jacksonville at fourth. I'm going to throw this one to Johnny because the last one we're all going to talk about together. Um, so, Johnny, give me your thoughts on this AFC South division. The AFC South, definitely it's been a roller coaster ride, made for short, or with the uh, Tennessee Titans coming, the entire team coming down with COVID. Well, not the entirety team, but majority of this, the team, I should say. And half the back the air game up with the Steelers to, I believe it was week seven now. Uh, and. <clears throat> But uh, I'm not surprised to see the Titans are still number one in their division. And uh, honestly, I'm not surprised with that. A uh, little surprised with Houston. But then again, when you start a season off, off with half in the face, the Steelers, the Ravens, and the uh, defending Super Bowl champions and the Kansas City Chiefs, I'm not surprised that they are in the boat that they are in right now. And I believe we had that conversation. And last time we did this show, so I think – I. Still wouldn't sleep on Houston. I think they can make a little bit of a comeback. Uh, Indianapolis, I uh, they got a decent team out there. there. Though I think Phillip Rivers is at the point he just needs to retire now. Uh, he just doesn't look the same quarterback he was five years ago with the San Di- with the then San Diego Chargers. Uh, Jacksonville, I'm not surprised is where they're at right now. Uh, they do have some good running backs, a couple old wide receivers. Uh, they're just missing a couple key pieces from being a good team. But overall, oh, I still wouldn't sleep on the AFC South or any team right now in the NFL because we've all watched anybody can and beat anybody right now, uh, regardless of what the record is. All right, indeed, that is possible. Let's jump over and talk about the final division, the AFC North. Keep it on gallery views. So we can all debate this. Um, let's just say that every team in this division right now is good, except for the Bengals. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not wrong. I'm that's not a, wrong. That's a that's a fair statement. It's a that fair statement. Great. For once yeah. in my life, I can say that my team is actually doing doing well. And it Maybe. looks like they're going to grab a playoff spot, dude. Like, don't jinx. Oh my that. god, do it's, not. I'm jinx not. Me. I'm not jinxing it, but like, it's happening. Like, don't you got to win me. like three more games, and then it's definitely happening. Well, I mean, if you look at the upcoming schedule, I looked at this upcoming schedule. Let me let, let me let me just put this out there. If you look up at the upcoming schedule for the Cleveland Browns, okay, like anybody who's a Steeler fan or whatever is probably hating me right now. I'm talking about the Cleveland Browns, but it's okay. Um, we're gonna look at the schedule here, and let's just put this out here that their schedule is relatively easy. If you look at the upcoming teams that they're playing. Okay, they had a win. They lost the first week versus Baltimore. That's acceptable. They got they got annihilated. We'll give it to them. Uh, the Bengals they beat. Not by as much as I wanted them to, but they beat them anyway. Washington, same thing. Dallas put up 49 points against them. Um, Indianapolis Colts, of course, like I said, was at that at that game, winning 32 to 23. Um, great seats, by the way. You can check check out my um, Instagram and stuff for pictures. This week coming up, week six at Pittsburgh. Um, yeah, you know that game is almost basically sold out for fans. I was trying to get tickets to that game too. They were like really really expensive, so I couldn't afford that. Plus, you had to buy them in sets of four, so you know. But um, they'll probably they'll probably lose to Pittsburgh this week, so they'll end up at, end up at a four and two. Um, week seven of Cincinnati, they're gonna beat them again. Vegas Raiders, that's a toss up game. You never know about that one. Houston Texans, the way they look right now, it could be a win for the Browns with the defense being better than it has been. The Eagles, that's a win for the Browns against the Jags, that's a win. Titans, probably a loss. Ravens, a loss. Against the Giants to win, against the Jets to win, and you're looking at Pittsburgh Steelers again at Week 17. So that's that is a playoff season. You're right, Doug. It is. Most of the teams are pretty easy to beat that the Browns have lined up this year. So I will give you that. Um, if you're looking at, I mean, you could potentially see three teams come out of the NFC North this this season going to the playoffs with Pittsburgh, Baltimore, yeah. and Cleveland. Yeah, I think that's going to be something big. You know. And That's there's a great. lot of there's a lot of buzz around the Baltimore Ravens right now. Not only because of uh, their play on the field, but uh, there's a certain third string quarterback who Trey McSorley who is taking over TikTok. Trey McSorley, <laughs> dude, I'm telling Trace you, man. McSorley. Week 17, they're gonna have a playoff spot locked up, and they're just gonna play that man for the memes. And I might cry. When that happens, like that would just this second it. string is Robert Griffin, right? Yeah, it's RG three. Yeah, right. Yeah, RG three is going to come down with some phantom injury, and it's going to be like all those TikToks that we see with uh, them being like, "Oh, we know what to do. We'll throw in Trace McSorley." I think I don't think we're giving the Steelers enough love here. They're at the top of the AFC North, but they, we but just- they, but they missed the game. But still, but can, they can would have imagine, beaten the Titans, dude. Can we? Can we just? Can we just picture that? Like, the Steelers are actually good. Well, they've always been good, but they've always like played down to their competition. And honestly, I have a feeling if we can like stop choking these games, like giving everyone a heart attack, we. The Steelers can go somewhere. I'm not even – like, I'm not yeah. – I'm trying to not release my inner Yinzer right now. But they they can make some serious noise. If they, if they tighten that up, you know, they have one of the youngest receiving cores in the entire NFL. And just because they're young doesn't mean they're not talented. you got Chase Claypool – um, Juju, I think Ebron's in there. Like they're just, it's meshing. Big Ben is back and better than ever, even though he's like super old. It's okay. You got James Conner rushing, and you you have a great def- like defense. Like, come on, like this is actually legitimate. <laughs> Can I go yeah. off? You just said Peyton, and and with the running back situation, it's not just James Conner. It's also Benny Snell football. Oh, Chase McFarland. Snell, Snell, yeah. But they said in Kentucky. Yeah, yeah. yeah but regardless, uh, is that whole running back core or has been doing it. Doug and I actually had this conversation last night. Eight. The Steelers have had three out of their four games have had a hundred yard rushing games. Three, one hundred yard rushing games. 
so far this season. And I'm looking at the Steelers' schedule right now. The only loss I think the Steelers are going to have is when in three weeks when they go down to Baltimore. So That's you're saying game. you're saying Pittsburgh is going to win every game except one. They're going to have a 15 and one season. Johnny, That's something fair. something's going to happen there where they at least lose four games. Yeah, like I'll I, I'll give listen. I will give you 12 and four. I'll even give you 13 and three. But I'm I not going to do 15, 15 and, and one. one. I'm not I doing almost, it. I almost guarantee we're losing to the Bills. I almost guarantee it. Yeah, I, I would bet my life on them losing to the Bills. Especially if they the, sign Le'Veon Bell. Not even that. It's just their defense is so good. Yeah, yeah the defense is yeah. good, but it's that offense that's going to struggle. We, we, do, defense. And we, drafted, we drafted the wrong Edmonds brother, and it will forever haunt me. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. Uh, anyhow, all the, 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 here's my other thing is because Peyton, once again, you brought this up. Um, we don't try to choke away these leads. Where's Mika Fitzpatrick been? Remember how he came in in week two or week three for us after we traded our first round pick to Miami and he just started lighting up, up the defense. Last week he went for a big hit and the guy just like, Nope, just sidestepped it and then bounced off. Like, wh- I, where's the – he fits Patrick from last year. All right, so I'm just going to throw this. I'm just going to – I'm just going to – I need to just step in here right now and just like with a whale harpoon and just kill it, right? I need to just kill this right now. Um, think of it this way. Uh, it's like Minka is like – what Evgeny Malkin is like where he's so good that you think he's doing something bad, but he isn't. And, you know, if we're going to question anybody, man, like Steven Nelson's been kind of suspect recently, but uh, you know, honestly, if they tighten up the defense by the time we get into the stretch run, this might be the most complete team that Ben has ever had. And, you know, the offense has been great. I think we uh, need to tip our caps not to Randy Feekner, but to uh, Matt Canada. I think that he's basically shadow coaching the entire offense right now. And it's been really interesting uh, so far. Yeah, I agree with that as well. Uh, Can we also just enjoy the the fact that – Mike Tomlin had to eat his words about the rookies this year. He said, Ed, right before or the game against the Giants, the rookies would not make an impact this season. And, uh, Doug, I know you'll agree. <clears throat> yeah, I think that uh, they have made it a big impact so far. Yep. All right, well, let's jump ahead to the final segment of the show, and this is the pick like we always talk about. Six games we've picked. And we will go through these, toss them one each one of you guys. Six, six of the best games we feel for the, for the week coming up in week six. Um, so let's do this right now. Uh, Bears versus Panthers is our first one. Who would like to take that one? Wait, wait. I'm sorry. Got to do the helmets. It's a way. It's our tradition. Bears and Panthers. There's your Sunday Night Football clock thing. Bears, Panthers. Uh, who's taking it? And who are you picking? Uh, I'll take this one. Okay. Um, I really like this matchup. Um, you know, it's a really good defense against the offense that's on the rise with Carolina. You know, Mike Davis has really stepped in well um, in the absence of Christian McCaffrey. And uh, Teddy Bridgewater has been great. They've been getting a lot out of Robbie Anderson. And I think this is going to be one of those ones. It's going to be super tight because, uh, you know, the Bears offense isn't up to par. They're doing just enough to win. It reminds me a lot of the Steelers last year when we had Duck Hodges in. But um, I'll take the Panthers in this one. See how he's dropped that, Doug? I did. <laughs> I did. All right, that's a, I, don't, I don't have the ones to throw, so I just got to drop them now. All right, next game up, we have um, a pretty uh, ba- crappy game of uh, Battle of Teams that are terrible. Um, the Atlanta Falcons, surprised we're talking about them in a the game, right? 
and Falcons and the Minnesota Vikings. Peyton wants it. Go ahead. Okay. This is a tank bowl, everyone. Kind of. This is a tank bowl. Okay. The, ba- the, the objective of the game is to lose to get the first overall pick. And I think the winner of the tank ball is going to be the Falcons. And the – no, no, I'm not picking the win. Oh, uh, uh, see, see, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> exactly. That's what's going to happen. I think they're going to go 0-6. They, they just look dead. They, they deserve every loss – that have they deserve the worst season because they have choked so many games. They're they're the Atlanta chokers basically. I think the Vikings they're only one and four, so I can't really say much. But I I feel like the Vikings can easily beat the Falcons. All right, let's do the next game. Packers and Buccaneers. Who wants it? I'll take this one. Okay, Johnny. Well, and I honestly believe this game's going to be a little more entertaining than what the records show. Oh, I mean, you have Tom Brady going up against Aaron Rodgers. Both teams have multiple weapons on the offense, and both have decent defenses. Well, I, though I'll give the edge on defense to Green Bay. However, <clears throat> I'm going to pick Tampa Bay to win this one. And just because I think everyone's giving in Green Bay – a little more credit than I think they should for this game. I wouldn't sleep on Brady in, in the Bucks. So, oh uh, yeah, I'm going with Tampa. All right, nice game. Cardinals. Oh no, well, Card. Yeah, Cardinals and the Cowboys. We'll do that one next. Um, Arizona Cardinals, the Dallas Cowboys. Who wants it? All right, I'm gonna do. You know, back to back on this one. Go for it. When I was actually excited to see this matchup up because uh, originally I thought we were gonna have Murray versus Dak Prescott, but as we all know, that's not happening now because Dak is out. Though, oh, I think this is still gonna be an interesting matchup. Uh, both the offenses are very talented, it, but I'm gonna give the edge to the Arizona Cardinals in this one. And I think Kyler Murray's going to show oh, why he he's, was taken and as a first-round quarterback. I think he, he's definitely been one of the most underrated players this year, here, especially fantasy-wise. And I think Doug will agree with me on that. We had that conversation way before the season even started. So I look for Kyler Murray to uh, light up the scoreboard this week. So let's see what the Arizona Cardinals can do. Two more games left. Next is the Chiefs and the Bills. Let's slow this one up there right now. Here we go. Who wants it? Doug or Peyton? This one. Okay. I'll take this one. This is actually one of the better matchups you're going to see all year. Um, you know, it's two teams that are four and one. Both have great defenses. And, you know, Mahomes is the great established guy. Uh, at quarterback, and then you have Josh Allen, who has been balling out so far. He's really cementing himself as, I think, a top 10 quarterback in the league right now. Uh, could easily run the top five. But um, I think the Chiefs are going to be running a tighter ship uh, this week, especially with them losing earlier this year. Um, or They lost last week, right? Yes, the, the Vegas. <laughs> to the Raiders, yeah. Yeah, they're going to be running a really tight ship. Uh, that shouldn't have happened, and uh, I'm going to take the Chiefs as a result. All right. In the last game, we all know it's coming. Browns and the Steelers. Oh, I get this one. Yes, you do. Yes. So, this is at Heinz Field, mm-hmm. and there will be fans, which I'm Obviously. very happy about. There was fans um, last week, too, at this stadium. I was there. Yeah, there. <laughs> that was fun. I just keep putting um, that up. It was fun. This is going to be a highly anticipated matchup. We all know the events that happened last year with Mason mm-hmm. Rudolph and a certain player of the Cleveland Browns, <clears throat> Miles Garrett. <clears throat> Sorry, I had a cough there. But, uh, you know, there's going to be some cold blood. I-, I personally feel this is going to be – this is actually going to be a good match, I think. Mm-hmm. You know, the Browns have been on fire. Steelers. 
clicking on all cylinders. I do think Pittsburgh's going to uh, take this one, though. I think it's going to be a tight game, though. Drop the helmet. I did. There you go. I did. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't going to. I was just sitting down nicely, but I, I didn't drop it from as high as high of a uh, distance. I like half put it down and then just like dropped it from my fingers instead of like dropping it from the sky. <laughs> as long as it gets dropped. Yeah. Like not, Mason, not, not, like not, Miles Garrett did to Mason Rudolph. Yeah, but you know, must is this will this stay on my head? Probably not. Let's go. Nope. Fair enough. Fair. Okay. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. All right. So that, that's um, all the matches for this week. Anything else you guys like to add going into week six before we close out the show? Uh, I actually he got a fantasy question from a friend of mine. Uh, and he's actually struggling right now. He needs a tight end. And because the guy he's got, uh, it's kind of in tanking. So his options right now are, are jo- Juwan Smith from Tennessee or from your – uh, Cleveland Browns, Aaron Cooper. Hooper? Austin, Austin Hooper. Hooper? Austin Hooper. Yeah, I, think, I think the most logical reason, the most logical solution to this is uh, to pick up Heath Miller. But <laughs> 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 wait, is Jimmy Graham available in his league? No, he is not. Someone already has. I was, was going to say, Rod Johnny Smith, man. He's. Johnny oh, Smith's doing very well. Yeah, yeah, he's been doing really good this year. He's on the rise. And my thing is with Austin Hooper is I'm always I'm always safe to play him. Actually, Nolan called me today with the same conundrum of should I play Tyler Higby or Austin Hooper? And I told him to play uh, Tyler Higby because um, tight end's always a question mark with Cleveland. They always have a couple. And I feel like the – Anytime you're in a situation where you have a guy who's fighting for touches, very similar to the Daryl Henderson Jr. Cam Akers situation in Los Angeles, uh, you're, there's no real winner and there's no real fantasy value in it. So uh, I'd stick with Johnny Smith. Yeah, from what I can see, I, I, I would definitely agree with Doug, stick with Johnny Smith. I definitely can see that Baker Mayfield does target Austin Hooper a lot. However, the downfall of Hooper is Hooper misses a lot of passes. Well, yeah. I was I was there watching the game against Indianapolis. Hooper could have grabbed three of those passes that were in his reach. He just let he just couldn't get them, let them drop. Um, so I mean, he does average about ten points a game just because of all the targets he gets and the and the kind of yards he does get. He does get open sometimes out in the flat on his on his post routes out towards the sideline, but he does miss the ball a lot. Um, so that's a little downfall I see on that. The only time I could ever say that you could rely on rely weekly consistently on a Cleveland Browns tight end was Gary Barnage. Because that guy was amazing. I don't know what happened to him. I was going to say, he, like, just fell off the face yes, of the earth. Yes, he was great. I don't know what happened. He just... Same with uh, Jordan Cameron. Yes. Yeah. Like, Jordan Cameron was really good. Like, and then he disappeared. Gary Barnage appeared. And now we're just in this cycle that has led to them paying Austin Hooper an astronomical amount of money. Well, see, they also have David and Joku back now. So, he's, he was activated off IR before last week's game. He played last week's game. Um, so, it's a little bit of a – he was coming back too. Yeah, it's a little mix up there. He, Austin Hooper is getting a little less touches because of Njoku in there. But they have, they're not really playing Njoku in targets because they're playing three three wide receiver set with Higgins, uh, Higgins, Beckham, and Landry. You're only playing one tight end at Hooper. So, but my thing is, is like when – he's going to probably get more touchdowns and more like red zone chances. Cause I feel like when you're in the red zone, you're throwing in Joku out there. Cause he's just a big guy. Oh yeah, for sure. He's yeah. He's what? Six, five, two, two, 45. I was a tight end and something like that. Yeah. You know, it's like, almost like what the Steelers do with Eric Ebron, you know? Yeah. And of course, Beckham and Landry pulling off their uh, wild catches. Like they always do versus Coles. Did you see the catch that Beckham pulled in? Oh my, that was yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. It's a catch. I was yeah, argue, yeah. arguing back home. It's like, they're like, it's not a catch. I'm like, it's a catch. Trust me. I saw it here. It's a catch. I, I actually did I actually did watch part of that game, and that was one of those I saw. I went, from every angle I watched it from, I was like, yeah, it's, it's a catch. Yeah, and then the one Landry grabbed it held on over top of the Colts defender. That was great, too. But, you know, I'm biased, so. 
just a little bit. I mean, and little, if you got a little a, bit. A Steelers, you have a Steelers fan here that even agreed it was a catch. So, yeah, uh, this will be a good game on Sunday. I wish I wish tickets were cheaper so I could go, but you know it is what it is. So, and they're almost sold out of tickets anyway. I just want it to be interesting. I want to see uh, Miles go into the sideline and go after Mason. <laughs> I, want, I want something wild, man. You want something want, wild, or you don't? Don't want something wild. I want something wild. I want. Yeah, but then I'll lose a player, so I don't want. To do I just that. want a high amount of gang activity to ensue on that field on Sunday. I need it. You you know something stupid is going to happen, and but that it's either going to be one of those moments that's going to go oh before the game, or like. I'm just going to say it. I'm not going to say hey, it's going to happen. And the, At the end of the game? Say, theoretically, the Steelers are blowing out Cleveland. Yeah. And Miles Garrett just has enough and just just goes after anybody. I think will happen. I said just theoretically. I didn't say it was going to happen. I said Hopefully theoretically. Not. All right. But. I think it's probably time to wrap this up. Indeed it is. <laughs> all right. Good call, Doug. But uh, all right, well, that'll do it for this week's edition of uh, Fantasy Football Freak Show. We'll be back in two weeks, give or take, with another edition to cap off week six and seven and move on to week eight. Um, but I have myself, John Gattelis, Doug Glackey, John Sakaguchi, and Peyton Trollinger. Thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you next time right here on CTV Sports 1.